Hello everyone and welcome back to Djibouti! We are in uh, the end of May of 1938 and we are basically waiting um, until the end of July uh, to declare this war. Um, we might even want to wait until the end of June just to get uh, get everything. Um, sorry, we might even want to wait until the end of August just so we can get everything uh, up and running and, uh, and well organized and everything like that, although it might put us just a little bit behind. Um, they are busy, the Republic of the Moluccas. Um, they're who I'm really worried about. Um, I think the Romania fight will go fairly well. I think this is the majority of their army, although honestly I don't rightly know. Um, we could take a look at some of our intelligence information. Let's take a look at our neighbors here. Um, we probably, yeah, we, we only have one spy over here in the Republic of the Moluccas. Uh, because we weren't previously neighbors with them. We were neighbors with other people. Well, <laughs> the Soviet Union, primarily. So now we need to infiltrate the Republic of the Malacas before we can actually have any sort of reasonable information about them. Um, this is, yet again, just an estimate, and because we only have one spy, it's probably not a very good estimate. Um, if they only have 310 manpower, that would be fantastic, because we can basically just engage in a war of attrition with them, and they wouldn't be able to reinforce their army for very long. Although, only having 25 national unity, we'd only need to take like two or three of their victory provinces before they actually surrender. I sincerely doubt that any of these numbers are accurate, in any way, shape, or form. Now with Romania, we have 10 spies, so these numbers can be reasonably assumed to be, to be accurate. They have uh, just about as much manpower as we do. They have 133 industrial capacity, so about one-third what, what we do in terms of effective industrial capacity, and they have a decent amount of national unity, so we'd actually need to completely take over their country um, to, uh, to force them to surrender. Um, so that involves basically invading all the northern British Isles. And yeah, the, the Malukas, they're very spread out. Like, I'm really surprised they have so little IC. Hmm. So I was looking around, and I was like, well, what about Belgium, right? Uh, they're, they're close to our end of the spectrum, so more than likely they wouldn't get much in the way of, of allies. And we do have some cores on them. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not very many cores. But what we can do is attack them for our cores, and then uh, add another Cassis Belly just uh, as, as a, a puppet Cassis Belly. So we can give the majority of the Iberian Peninsula to Belgium. And I'm sure they have cores on all of this. Yeah, okay. So what we could do is attack Belgium, try to make it over the Pyrenees down here, uh, which wouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Um, Belgium doesn't have much in the way of, uh, of industrial... Oh my goodness, never mind. Okay, they have quite a bit of industrial capacity. Wow. So yeah, it might be a, a better idea to go down here so that we don't need to fight on two fronts and then maybe even on a third front depending on uh, what our what our situation is that might be a better option for us we could even uh, use our marine corps that's going to uh, pop in a little bit and just land right here land right in their in their capital region and hide behind this uh, this river here with uh, with some of these uh, better defensible provinces or we could land down here in the mountains or whatever send our special forces down south while our army pushes in from the north either way um, whatever works but before we do any of that, we need to wait until we're actually deployed. Like We need to wait until the third army finishes fleshing out. We need to wait until our... Uh, this is the second armored corps. This is the first armored corps. The second mounted corps um, is actually upgraded to motorized infantry rather than cavalry. Um, basically, we have a couple of months to wait, um, and then we can decide what we're going to do. Um, now, if we do attack the Republic of the Malacus, we could probably expect on some... Uh, some help from Latvia if we declared a uh, co-belligerent war, which I think would would make sense. Like, if we asked for Latvia's help up here, um, how much in the way of uh, cores do you have up here, Latvia? You have some. You have some cores up in this area. Not much. Not too much. Okay. But yeah, I don't think we can expect too much help from Latvia. I think their army would just get trounced. I don't know why they're continuing to churn out militia. But, uh, I mean, they have a decent army. I'm not going to complain too much about them. All right, Marine Corps is starting. I think we are going to deploy them to the south here. Um, this will be the uh, the port that our Marine Corps operates out of, um, the Mediterranean. 
And we're going to name these guys the First Marine Corps. Actually, it's not going to be the first. It's going to be the Marine Corps. All right, there we go. And yeah, we'll give them really good generals, I think. I'm going to use up these... Uh, well, okay, I don't want to use up these skill sixes. Never mind. So let's do... Um, People who have bonuses to logistics, I think. Yeah. Logistics. Awesome. And while we're doing all of this nonsense, we could even... Oops. Let's, let's go down here and look at him again. School of Maneuver and Engineer. No, I want logistics. Although, Commando wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, let's do Commando, just in case they actually do run out of supply. Um, we are going to uh, pop open the Order of Battle here for our two armies, and we are going to see if they, if any of our leaders are at max skill or like gained so much skill that it makes sense to, uh, to redeploy them elsewhere. So here we have a skill level one, skill level three, you are one and at max, so we don't want you in command of anything anymore. I mean, look at all the awesome, fantastic traits you have, but one skill is your max? No thanks. Let's come back down here and assign a new skill level zero leader to that guy. Maybe you can actually gain some skill. You've got skill one, but you're not at max, and you're at skill three, and you're not at max. So, sixth core, fine and dandy. Seventh core, you're good. Skill three max, I mean, that's better than a skill one max, but let's, let's assign yet another skill zero to you. Skill three, skill four, ooh, that's nice. Let's assign a skill zero to you, and we'll, uh, we'll promote so these uh, skill four guys to uh, two core commanders. You're skill three maximum, so we'll get you a general who can actually improve. Fourth core, skill five, five, three, four. Why are you five? Wow, you must have gained a lot of experience here. We'll redeploy you. You're you're skill four. Skill three, skill three. No one has. No one has max, right? Oh, you have max. You're a skill zero max. Oh. Okay, so Garrison Corps. Nicholas Bobber is who we're looking for. He's a skill zero max. Nick Bobber. Here he is. Okay, we're just going to slot him into a garrison division and forget that he exists. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, that's horrible. All right. Third core, skill five. Here, here is skill five. Let's get a skill zero into you. Make sure you're not a skill zero max. It's a skill four. Boom, done. You're skill four as well. I think the uh, third core saw a lot of combat. It certainly seems that way. You're a skill four max. So we might want to slot you somewhere that you're not going to do any damage to our experience generation. Skill 5, skill 3, 3 max. It's not fantastic. Skill 3, skill 3, skill 3, skill 3. Okay. There's the second army done and slotted away. Now the first garrison corps. We we have I, I really wish you could you could sort these people's skill by oh, you can, by whether or not they were at max. I mean, you, you can in, like, you need to actually use your scroll wheel and scroll through to see who's at max level and who's not. So we're going to slot the max skilled uh, leaders into our garrison divisions, our garrison um, cores here, so that we don't end up uh, wasting some awesome experience generation on troops that are actually going to go into combat. And your skill three, Major General, like, there's no reason that we should waste you on a unit that we're not actually planning on uh, attacking anybody with. That's quite a bit of experience that you're, uh, and, and skill, that is going to be just sitting at the, the rear of the line and, and never actually uh, contributing to the, to the war effort. There's another one, Hilton Ney. We'll eventually filter all these guys out. I 
feel like I've already, already used a guy named J.C. Emerson in the first Garrison Corps. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I accidentally did something else. Okay, well, why did I deploy a skill 5 into this position? Let's find a skill 0 or a skill 1 or whatever at max. We'll do that. The skill 5 guys are better used elsewhere, I think. And you know, this is the kind of micromanagement that I'm really looking forward to not needing to do anymore. Like, I know that I don't actually need to go through and do any of this stuff, but it really feels like I'm um, doing something wrong unless I, unless I min-max this way, because this is a 20% bonus. Like, going from a skill 1... Oh, man... Going from a skill 1 um, uh, commander in charge of a battle to a skill 3 commander in charge of a battle is a 10% swing in the combat efficiency of your troops. So so rather than just have a 5% bonus to your combat efficiency, now you have a 15% bonus to your combat efficiency, which really doesn't sound like much, but all these little little bonuses add up and, and make your troops just that much better. Okay, so our second mounted core... We have a whole bunch of old guards here attached to these guys. Let's promote the skill 5s and 4s out of the way. Sort of want our tanks to have, at the very least, skill 3 guys. It doesn't matter if their, um, their actual skill matches up. Obviously, we would prefer if it does, but... We just want them to have, like, these are the guys we're going to need to trust. Oh, you're at max skill. Darn it. Someone else. Someone who isn't at max skill. How about you? Yeah, that's fine. I just need to, I need to remember to check for that. You, you're fine. Okay, everyone can learn. These are, the, like, the tip of the spear, you know? The mounted divisions. So, we really don't want to waste them. You're uh, level 5, so we're going to promote you out of that position and slot in uh, skill level 0, your skill level 3, you're fine to keep there. Skill level 3, 3, 3, and your 5 max. So let's get a 5 that isn't max. Like you. Okay, there's the 8th core. Your 3 max, so we will remove you. We're not going to promote you out of here, but we're going to remove you with the uh, uh, lesser skilled guy. You are skill 4 now, so we're going to promote you out of there. Skill 3, skill 4. Wonderful. Skill 3. And skill 5. Good stuff. 3. Here's a 4 with a bunch of traits. It's fantastic. Skill 2. Skill 1 max. No thank you, sir. Wonderful. And a skill 2, and a skill 5. Okay. We've got 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 5. Okay. First army. Yep. Okay. First army's all set. Um, and let's go through the third army before we go through our three garrison corps on the mainland. Um, even though the third army is not completely deployed yet, we do want to make sure that they deploy with decent generals. I guess it's fine that they deployed a bunch of skill 3s there. I'm not going to micromanage that much. I just don't want anyone with a max skill leading these frontline combat troops. Okay, there's that. And now we will expand the garrison core. Oh, this is the, the light core first. Now let's get as good a people in charge of the light core uh, again, just to make sure that everything's A-OK. -okay. Yeah, you can still gain traits, gain experience, so yeah, you're fine. Skill 2, no thank you. I think we're going to actually uh, put a lot of these skill 4s in charge of these guys. As long as they don't have max skill, yeah, okay, we'll do that. It will be a demotion for them, unfortunately, but... Darn it, I'm the leader of this country. I get to decide what's important, what's not. 
I mean, you are incredibly skilled. We want them in our... in the command structure of our Special Forces Division. Okay, fantastic. Now the garrison. You are a level 5 that I don't want in command of a garrison corps. So we're going to promote you. <laughs> See, this is this is sort of weird. Like, we were just demoting people who were important to us. Now we're promoting people who are unimportant to us. Like, it's... <laughs> it's an interesting... Interesting thing that's going on here. There's a max. No one named Max gets to lead frontline troops. There we go. You're already at max. Skill level zero, Max. That's abysmal. Might as well not even have a general. Or at least not a named general. There we go. Here's another one. Fantastic. There's a third garrison corps. You're a skill level zero. But you're not at max. So you might actually be useful to us one day. If we get you in a role where you can actually gain experience... There's another one, Max. Edison Koss. Get out of there. There we go. Ira K. Sounds like the host of an NPR show or something like that. Oh, that's Ira Glass. Right, right, okay. I gotcha. No, we're not skilled two people. We are running out of low-skilled, uh, max... Sorry, yeah, low-skilled, max-skilled people. Peaked. We're, and you're a skill level three max, I guess you're fine. We're running out of people who peaked in the low-skill range. There you are. Okay. Good. Good. Done. 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 Now let's go. Alright, we've got another unit of Marine Corps, who... Yeah, that's fine, yeah, sure, why not. Oh, another person has declared war on Japan, the Choctaw Nation. Where are you? These guys have now declared war on Japan. Yeah, they see, they see that Japan is dead, and they are jumping on it to get as many uh, units of territory as they can. Latvia has forced the surrender. That province of that uh, the country down there. So Latvia has actually gained all of these things. That's good. Good for Latvia. All right. I mean, it's another front you need to defend somehow, but whatever works. We got an infantry warfare upgrade, and now we're doing ahead of time research on infantry warfare. So our infantry organization is doing rather fantastic. I believe that was one of the things that we had difficulty with because of our uh, officer ratio. Nationalist Spain, doing nasty things, and we need more production. So we have the third army being fleshed out over here, We've got you doing your stuff up here. We aren't researching anything in terms of light tanks because we're still doing our officer ratio nonsense. I think we need to start slotting all of these in. Because we need to get to medium tanks at some point. If we're going to be trusting our light tanks, we need to get to medium tanks at some point. We've got you doing well, we've got you doing well. We're almost finished with two more carriers. Are we going to finish with another carrier tech anytime soon? Cruiser tech. We're going to finish with an engine soon. That's really not worth it for for waiting for more escort cruisers. So yeah, I think we are just going to continue on with our... Sorry, carriers. I think we are just going to continue on with our escort carriers, just for the practical. We may even go over to seaplane carriers, although they are built with battleship tech, and we don't have battleship tech, so... Yeah, we're just going to keep going with that. We might want some submarines, but we aren't even researching that tech at all. At all at all. I think we should just expand our air force. Let's do some more interceptor planes. And eventually we will get to the point where we can build uh, multi-role fighters. 
In fact, let's slot that in, too. We're just queuing up stuff to, to research when we have the uh, leadership. We did expand our leadership base, our leadership pool. Uh, yeah, sure, you can build some of our neighbor bombers. That's fine by me. Uh, we did expand our leadership pool when we uh, conquered the Soviet Union. Um, it's obviously... It wasn't enough to, uh, to ensure our... Um, officer ratio just jumped right up through the roof, but... Yeah, I can see Japan not being able to afford that trade deal anymore. Speaking of interceptors, we just finished another two interceptors. Where are you? You're the fourth interceptor, yeah. Okay. So do we have a third one in production? No, we do not. So I'm gonna slot in a fourth interceptor here. Oops. <coughs> ah, sneeze, man. Okay, I'm going to slot in a fourth interceptor here so we can deploy one of them to the fourth interceptor and then we'll have a fifth interceptor squadron all fleshed out and ready to go. Should be fine. We are investing a lot more into consumer goods than we need for the purposes of descent reduction, because we are losing um, half a percent of our total industrial capacity due to our, uh, our current rank of, of descent, and it was uh, higher previously, so, I mean, we're losing, what is that, like four or five of our available industrial capacity units um, as a direct result of that. What did we just finish? Oh, we're finishing the upgrades. Wonderful. Good stuff. We do need to let them uh, reinforce, reorganize, and that sort of thing. Before we can really count on them, but... But it's going well. It's going good. Can't really complain about that too much. We're about to finish the rest of them. End of July. End of July. End of July. End of September. Uh, we might need to end up waiting that long. Honestly, we could wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and we'd never actually end up declaring any wars. So, um, what might be in the cards is more tack bombers. Unless we want to keep building more infantry. I mean, that's really the option here. We don't really have the tech to begin building medium tanks. That is something that I would like to get done, but it's really not in the cards yet. Uh, we could build a sort of gimped um, motorized squadron with the intention of building uh, armor attached to it. Like we could do two motorized and what? Motorized anti-aircraft? That's the only real support unit we have. We could slot engineers in there. That wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, that might not be bad at all, actually. So we'll build weak motorized divisions at this point with the intention of slotting in, uh... You know, if we're gonna do that, we might as well just build another armor division with an engineer brigade attached to it, and then we can upgrade the light armor to the medium armor division. That wouldn't be bad at all. Or do we want an armored car attachment rather than the engineer? Let's see, the engineer would reduce um, any terrain penalties and that sort of thing, and the armored car increases the speed and gives a significant amount of soft attack. Hmm. And further reduces their softness. I don't think that's in the cards for us just yet. I think we're going to do... Um, naval bombers? It's really not that great. Let's do... Um, let's see, let's finish out our close air support. Do we have any close air support? I don't think we even have any close air support yet. Let's do a wing of... Well, let's do two wings of close air support. Aircraft. Call that done. Arctic Warfare Infantry Equipment. Alright, that's an infantry tech that we don't need to worry about doing ever again. That's a good thing to have. 
Awesome. And artillery carriage and sights. And you are now ahead of time. So we'll do anti-tank. Although that's really not desperately necessary. And what, we need more production again? Why don't we just finish building? <laughs> I sound so angry that we finished something. <laughs> um, uh, I suppose we're doing fine on, uh, on resources now. If we can actually start uh, start working on building some industrial capacity, we do have significant production. Let's do let's do five um, in cereal for the foreseeable future, and we can just bump these down if we ever need to uh, get some more IC for for an actual project. We are going to want to devote a significant amount of IC to. Uh, for instance, building more light cruisers, building more aircraft carriers, and yeah, all of these we can continue to research. Okay, so, you guys. The plan is that we punch right in through here, force this little guy, who is Ethiopia, force this little guy to surrender, and then try to hold this little valley in here. Cut the country in half, and then reduce everybody up north. We can even at that point probably call in Latvia. Once we've finished the uh, the, the push-through movement, we can call in Latvia and have them and their army help us. So we need to redeploy um, you down here, and you guys will also... I want to stack you. We'll have one core stacked on hybrid to help them hold. And the other core will have stacked up here in Benshin to help them hold. So we're going to sort of shift this entire army down in this direction here. Move down to Strasbourg. Oh, I only I only moved the core HQ. I didn't actually move that infantry unit. Okay, there we go. That's fine. And you will hold the southern front, the southern flank. And, yeah, I think we're going to need to pull you up as well to help hold this southern flank. Because we only have one infantry on each of these, each of these spots here. We'll double that up there, and that will also allow us to take advantage of any nonsense that happens. Uh, once we start pushing down uh, further south. Now, as for these special forces units, I think we are going to deploy the Marines um, not immediately on the front line. Um, so that means we're going to be using the Gurkhas to defend these provinces here, and we need to split off a third army corps down here to the south to take the place of the core that we deployed up north. And the only purpose of these guys will be to slow down the enemy advance. Now, where, where did you end? So we're, we're still missing defense of that province. So I think we do need to shift these guys down just a little bit. Unfortunately, that means you guys aren't going to be very well defended. So we'll move you over here. Just a little bit. Yeah, we'll pull out of Tutlingen, move down to Constance, over here. Yeah, okay. I think that should be fine. We'll redeploy them if need be. So, we've got you coming down that way. I think we're going to just uh, attach you to the Paris HQ. Same with the uh, Marine Corps. And that's how the, uh, the First Light Corps is also um, attached to it. So that means that there's only two corps now attached up here and their responsibility is going to be the northern front. We'll wait to deploy them until just a little bit from now. Until we actually see what the situation is like. Heavy cruiser, main armament advance. Fantastic. Uh, let's work on your actual armor for now. Good stuff. Nice autosave. Much less pissed off at you now that you've saved my butt a couple of times. Okay, so what we've basically done is completely abandoned this entire front line, and we only have two infantry corps to defend it. 
So we need one unit of infantry, at the very least, up here in Don Helder. And then, let's see, if we stand in Zwale, we only get the river crossing from these two provinces. If we stand in Amosfort, we get a river crossing from Zwale and from, not from Appledorn. So Amersfoort and Appledorn. Yeah, this is a nice, nice little defensive line here. Um, I think we will at least start out in Zwale, even though it's not going to be fantastic. We're going to have the Core HQ sitting in Amsterdam. 8th Division in Dan Helder. 9th in Zwale. 10th in Appledorn. 11th in Betwe. Forgive my pronunciation. And that in this one, and I don't know what the apostrophe S actually uh, is pronounced like, but uh, I don't think I'm actually going to try to pronounce it. So there's that. Then we have one in Venlo, one over here, one over here, one over here. And this river will be nice for defensive purposes. And we'll slot you in Aachen. And then we will need to redeploy this, um, this core to actually defend that front. Heavy cruiser engine, which is really nice. I think I'm gonna continue, continue that research as it stands. And we have the first beginnings of the third mountain. Attach you to the third army. We're unfortunately not going to be able to deploy them um, for real use in this battle. At least not for a while. Good job, Costa Rica. Proud of you. You've got quite the awkward border now with the Choctaw down here, but I guess that's sort of to be expected. Okay, what are we looking like down here? Somehow managed to end up with three infantry divisions in this one province. So you're doing fine. This line is fine. You're moving into Tetlingen. Let's sort of shift north a little bit. We'll leave two infantry divisions there. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, you and you. Let's... Uh, no, you're defending Forsheim already. Yeah, okay. So we've got... two in this province. This is our jumping off province. And three in that province. And then we're gonna have you split three and two. Fantastic. And then you, we need to use to support their attack. So we're going to have two in here, two in here, and maybe we can have one up there. No, we need to we need to protect Visbaden as well. So we need two right here, one right there, one up there. And yeah, I guess we'll just keep two in this province. Wonderful. We can still continue to research that. It's only 38 tech. And we are out of things to produce yet again because... Why? What did we just finish? Oh, the first, uh, the first light armored. Why is that the first light armored? Do the rest of them have special names? This is the first light armored division. Oh, we built the rest of them as cavalry. That's the first one that actually was built with, uh, with light armor. In mind. In direct mind. It's fantastic. Okay, since we aren't going to be getting any more um, carrier research until August, I suppose we could wait a month to start this tech. It's not worth it. No, we're gonna start. We're gonna start two more escort carriers right away. We're down to uh, twelve months. Actually, we, we're not even. If we do that, we're not even waiting. We're not even taking advantage of that. Let's just uh, bump up our supply production for now in preparation for the war, so that we don't waste any uh, any industrial capacity. Fantastic, fantastic. Bump that down. Bump that back up. Oh, we need a bunch of upgrades. Okay, that's fine. We'll move that over there, at least for now. 
we're almost done with our consumer good production and descent reduction, so should be fine as well. And we can attach you to our existing tactical bombers. First stack. Wonderful. And yeah, I think it is worth our while to continue. Uh, do we have any naval bombers at all? No, we don't. Let's build two naval bombers. Just to say that we have them. You know how it is. Okay, make sure we've got that done, that done. And we'll do one more turn with this descent reduction going on. There we go. And we'll bump you back down. Bump you back down, and that'll be fine. Wonderful. And our front line looks alright. How is Aachen doing? You are still only at two infrastructure. And because your infrastructure is so low, it's taking such a long time to repair that airfield as well. We did a number on that province. Romania is mobilizing. You mean you weren't mobilized? Hmm. Oh well. Okay, we've got another two escort carriers. And where did I put our CAGs? Down here, okay. We're going to split you in two, apparently, because we need to do that, and rebase the carrier. Wonderful. And I'd say we're doing pretty well. Boy, I feel like I need to sneeze again. That's not good. And maybe we should start on another uh, another infantry army. Unless we want uh, to shift to motorized production. We can't shift to motorized production. We don't have uh, self-propelled artillery yet. Because we need to do all this light tank research. So infantry it is. Yep, infantry it is. That's how it's going to need to be. Alright, well, I'm going to take a break here. Thank you for joining me yet again. I think it's almost time. I think once we get into this province here, we're going to need to just... Uh, oh, we're having supply issues already? Why? Come on. Regardless, I think we have a good plan. I think the uh, smash them through the middle plan is a good one. They don't have a significant amount of troops uh, along this part of their border. And uh, we've managed a, at least a small troop concentration in here. Like the rest of our provinces of basically one division per province, and here we've got what, four or five, depending on the province. So I think we've managed a good uh, local force concentration. I think we have a good plan, and I think we'll be able to possibly finish this war quickly as well, um, and then shift our attention back down south. So join me next time for the uh, for the war. Thank you much, everybody, and I'll see you all next time.